Welcome everybody, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and today we're beginning a new Blender modeling series. Yes, it's going to be a couple episodes long, I'm going to work on it over the next few weeks. And we're working on creating a sci-fi mining station, kind of inspired by some of the train pieces we've seen for Warcash and Neo Mechanica. But this kind of thing can work with pretty much any game out there. So today we're starting with these pieces right here, which are half of essentially a piping system or some pipelines that when you're going to print it off and glue it together, you've got one nice piece like this, which then of course you can just daisy chain for however long you need. So we'll get started with the blender modeling process here in just a moment. But in case you want the STL files for not only these guys right here, but also two end pieces we'll probably tackle later on, you can find a link to my Etsy store in the description of this video, and you can find the STL files for purchase over there. All right, let's dive into Blender and get this started. When it comes to creating a complete unified terrain set, the first thing I do is do a rough sketch of all the pieces, just to kind of take all those scattered images in my head and turn them into a relatively unified vision. And then now I'm gonna pick out the various areas one by one, in this case we're working on the pipelines first. And I'm gonna do a more detailed sketch identifying sizes of the piece, as well as what some of the core, more interesting details are. Just so that way I have something to build off of in Blender. And by the way, if you want this reference image here, you can find a link in the show notes of this video to that URL on tabletopbattlefield.com for this video. And you can download the image over there if you wanna work off my reference. To get started with the pipe system, I'm inside Blender here with basically an empty file, except for the fact that I've added a reference image of my detailed sketch. The first thing is basically to build the pipe itself, which is gonna be a cylinder with a whole lot of vertices and a diameter of about 15 millimeters, which is a radius of 7.5. Let's do that first. Now I'm gonna rotate on its side and set it to the length, which is probably about, the whole piece here says 100 millimeters, but let's make this pipe itself be about, ooh, let's say um, 90 millimeters. You can press N to open up this little box over here to get some more detailed control over angle and size and things like that. That's often really helpful with 3D printing to be able to control the numbers exactly the way they should be. And well, there's your pipe. <laughs> Really simple, right? Let's work on the attachment part over here. Now it's a bit of a girder system. We also have this octagon piece that goes with it. So let's build that first. And in Blender, an octagon is a really simple cylinder because a cylinder in Blender is basically an approximation of a cylinder. If you set the vertices to eight, what you get is an octagon. All we need to do here is rotate it 22.5 degrees and that gets us in the orientation we want. And we need to make this a little bit larger than the pipe. Oh, I don't know, let's make this guy be five by 25. Then we can line it up right here pretty close to the end. And what we wanna make sure we do, let's see, the green axis, that is the Y axis. We want to copy that value from the pipe and apply it to the octagon. That way they line up in the same spot on the Y axis and we get a much more correct positioning. So that's pretty good there. Let's look from this direction. Okay, that looks pretty good. So hey, we're moving along. Now the design calls for little bolts or I guess depending on what side they're on. Yeah, call them bolts. <laughs> Just make life easier. So the little tiny little octagons and we wanna put maybe, I don't know, maybe four to eight of them. So I'm just gonna copy my big octagon, scale it down. Let's try 2.5 millimeters. Position it on the front of this piece here. Yeah, that's kind of like what I'm trying to go for. I like that. Let's put seven more around the larger octagon piece. That looks more or less like you have a pipe with a whole bunch of bolts kind of attached to something. Very cool. Now we need to just duplicate this entire piece right here because the piping system has two pipes per terrain piece. So for that, let's just do or switch to wireframe. Because when you're in wireframe mode and you do a box select, it'll select everything. If you're in solid mode and do a box select, by default it only selects things that are visible. And in this case, we want to make sure everything's selected. So let's go to wireframe and do a box select with the with B on the keyboard. 
Then shift left click on the main pipe, control J to join everything together. Go over to the object context over here, the little cube with the four lines around it. And then up in the name, let's just call it pipe. And what I think I'm gonna do, let's go back to edit mode, select the last few here, and let me just extend it out just a little bit. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll go like that for now. I'll find the exact sizing of it in a bit, but just kind of drag that out because we gotta build a frame around it. Okay, so I am going to duplicate this piece and put it right next to it. So now I've got an idea as to how big kind of the connection piece is gonna be because right here is gonna be something that's gonna allow you to attach multiple of these piping systems together and just kind of keep going for as long as you want. And my design roughly called for a bit of a steel girder system that kind of wraps around these two pipe pieces. So for that, let me create a cube. And the cube I want to be 10 millimeters in every direction. Because I kind of arbitrarily decided that all the girders with this kit are going to be 10 millimeters. And in this particular case, the connection area is 40 millimeters tall by however I want to make it wide. I really didn't choose a size. That's not super important moment. So this girder piece, let's translate Z to 40. So there we go. That's its proper height. Let me line it up. What I want to do is make sure that this girder piece here is going to be lined up with the end of the pipe. Now I don't know where the end of the pipe is going to be yet, so I'm going to effectively choose that at this point. So we'll, we'll go back and make that adjustment in a bit. But let me build a little bit of a detailed girder to this thing, because ideally they have some cutouts to them. Um, but before I do that, let me just build a basic shape of this girder system. So that's good enough for right now. The reason I'm not too worried about putting the bottom one in is I'm actually gonna end up replacing these four cubes with the final girder pieces, but I just need to figure out some sizing first of the basic cube. So now let's turn one of these into an actual girder. We'll pick this guy over here. And for that, what I wanna do is actually cut some grooves into this face and this face. Now the back face is where you would actually attach multiple pieces together. So I don't need any detail there. And internally, you're not gonna see it anyway, so I don't care about detail there. For this process, let's just create a duplication of this cube. We're gonna move it a little bit off to the side, reduce its width to half. So let's see, we wanna go along the X axis, drop it down to five millimeters. And for the height, let's just make it a little bit shorter. Let's do 30 millimeters. And then let me go to wireframe mode and see how far we're cutting in there. That's probably a little bit too much. Let me drop this guy down to, let's do six millimeters. Drag it up here. And let's do a series of slots. Therefore, your printer will have a better job bridging across shorter distances than longer distances and therefore you may be able to get away without support material. So it's gonna require a little bit of advanced blender here to do this next part, but hey, it really isn't that hard. We wanna to go to the modifiers context over here. This is a little wrench on the right-hand side, and for add modifier, we're gonna choose the array modifier. And you, you probably saw a little something happen there. What this is gonna do is take your original piece and multiply it out several times and that's gonna give us a nice equally spaced thing to cut into these girders. So fit type is gonna be fixed count. Relative offset is fine, but what we wanna do is change one under X, put that to zero, and because we're going vertically at the moment, we wanna change the Z value here to a minimum of actually minus one. Because right now it looks like one giant object because we basically have two objects right next to each other. So start uh, fiddling with this number a little bit, let's go minus 1.25 and see how you got a little bit of spacing there. If that spacing looks good, now let's see if we can add more of these pieces to fill out the entire length of this girder. So for count, let's just update this number a bit. Okay, five is probably gonna be, 
Maybe. Now I can still move the whole set as if it's one object. And it's like, hmm, I bet that would work pretty well, eh? <laughs> so I'm going to keep that. Hit apply. And now I want to make sure that the spacing up here is pretty much identical to the spacing down there. Once again, just go to wireframe mode and you can kind of very roughly eyeball it. We're at one and a half down there. We're at two and a half up here. So split the distance by going about a half up. So we're a little bit less than two there, a little bit over two, about two, about two. That'll look pretty good. Now I'm going to take this object, duplicate it. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees along the z-axis. Now you notice a little trick there when I want to rotate it at an exact angle. What I tend to do is I rotate it roughly first visually so I know which number to change up here. And then I change the number to get the exact positioning. Let's slide it over so it's roughly in the middle of that thing. In fact, we can probably make it exactly in the middle, right? Because we can take our Y value. All right, maybe not. Yeah, I think I can. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Let's take the Y value from what's going to become the girder and apply the same Y value here. Now, copy and pasting these X, Y, and Z values only works until you start accidentally manipulating the center point of these pieces. Um, more on that in a different video. That's that's definitely a little bit more advanced Blender. <laughs> but that is something you can accidentally do. Actually, not accidentally. Well, accidentally, and it's very easy to do. And you know, I can do the same thing over here. So let me take the X value of the girder and apply it to the X value here. Are they already exactly the same spot? Awesome. Now what I'm going to do is take these two arrayed elements, join them together, and we're going to go back to our objects context, and let's call this girder cut out one let's go back to our vertical girder name this guy vertical girder vertically yeah, yeah vertical girder we want to go to our modifiers context add modifier boolean difference for operation for object girder cut out one and let's apply that now let me just drag this guy out of the way and there you go, you've got some just very quick and simple dirty details. Awesome. So now what I want to do is replace this guy with a copy of this. So let's just hit X, delete that, go back, click on this guy, shift D, wrong axis, move it over. However, we need the detail over here, right? So for that, we're going to mirror it, control M, and then Y. <laughs> And then that's going to mirror it along that axis, and we can just move it into place. So now let's add some detail into this girder piece here. And we can use the exact same cutout that we've been using. Now, you got to kind of warp your brain a little bit because you're this is like a negative inverse rotation. So what I want to do is rotate it like this. So let's do 0 and then 90. And then I will move it into place so that these pieces are cutting into this particular girder. All right, so that should do a pretty good job of cutting out the girder. So let's select the girder. And we're going to add a, another Boolean operation here, difference, with the same girder cutout piece. Hit apply. And then we can just move these guys out of the way. And I think that will work pretty good. We can just shift duplicate, move it on the z-axis. And since it's a square, we can really just rotate it. We don't need to mirror it in this case. Just rotate it like that. Set the proper dimensions. And then put it in the right spot. Now, a few last little cleanup things we want to do. For the top and bottom girders, we want to make sure they're overlapping the um, these pieces just a tiny bit. So you can see here, this beam is going into here and overlapping a little bit. Over here, it is. It is. So let's double check the top one now. Yep, a little bit of overlap. It doesn't need to be much. There just needs to be enough to basically make your slicer program be happy. Good. Okay. These backs of the pipes have to be aligned with the whole beam assembly. 
So I'm going to start by going into each one into tab mode. And then we're going to line up as close as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. We'll do some final cleanup here in just a moment. So they're pretty darn close. And then before we can print this thing and to do like our final little bits of cleanup, we want to merge all these things into one object. So I'll go back to wireframe mode. That works just like that. Let's go control J. And we're going to call some things. Let's call this guy. So let's go to our, our object context here. And let's just call it pipe assembly. So the last thing we need to do is just make sure all the edges are perfectly aligned. They may look perfectly aligned, but they may be off by a tiny little bit. And that could cause some issue with the slicer especially on the back here which is going to be along the print bed. You can if you look carefully if I zoom in you can see they're not perfectly aligned, but it's really easy to clean up. Tab to go into edit mode. We want to select all the vertices we want to align. There we go. And now we want to align them along the x axis which is the red line here. So S for scale, X for x axis, 0. And that just aligned them all. That's a perfect cleanup. Now we're going to do the same thing here for this one, except we're going along the Z axis, so S, Z, 0. And then same thing on the top, also along the Z axis, S, Z, 0. And that should be all the cleanup we really need to do. We've got a nice solid object that hopefully should work all right with your slicer program. Now, Sometimes we have these different faces overlapping with some slices that may be an issue. I find that Cure handles them pretty good these days, but in the past that was an issue. <sighs> Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. If it does, what you would have to do is go back into edit mode. Just move these octagons in a little bit. And you know what? Even though that means when this piece is assembled, there's going to be a little bit of support material to remove. Um, or and it means there'll be a little bit of a gap here in the pieces assembled, you really won't be able to tell visually because it's all hidden away. All right, let's export this guy as an STL and print up two of them and then they're gonna glue together over here. Well, congratulations, you got the first piece of your sci-fi mining set complete. All right, so this guy was designed to be printed on the print bed, more or less like that. So when you got a couple of those printed off, you can glue them together, and you got the beginning of, well, whatever you happen to be piping through these in your world you're creating, right? At the beginning of the video, I showed off these two pieces right here. I have a turn segment and kind of an end cap piece, if that's what you're looking for. I'll be talking about making these in a future video, but if you want to be adventurous, it's just a little bit of some vertex manipulation. You can, in edit mode, you can try to create these yourselves. Alternatively, once again, if you want to just buy the SDL files, you can find a link to my Etsy store in the description of the video, where you'll have all three of these available for sale as one set. So with that, thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. Until next time, we'll have a great week.